that we are facing one of the worst days in July in Queenstown. Coupled with that, I reside in Victoria Park and over that little community hangs a very heavy cloud as the last two days we have been experiencing a different kind of reality where two young men have lost their lives tragically and you know um, these, the death of these two boys are so close to my house it's um, really boys that have um, been close to my own children I know them very well and they both died at the hand of another young man so um, that's the present reality. Um, we don't have this, uh, these kinds of atrocities happen in our community. And when they do happen, they really hit hard because we are just not used to these kind of things happening. So um, that's the reality that I speak under tonight. And I really have a heavy heart for this uh, atrocity that has hit our little community in Victoria Park. But tonight I have titled my message, and I, I, I prepared this a while ago, and I didn't know that the day I'm going to have to prepare this, I'm going to have to speak under these kind of realities. But my message for tonight is that reality, and I titled it, The Road Less Traveled. And two things I wanna really touch on tonight on the subject. I want to ask us two very personal questions. Number one, how closely do you resemble the definition of a real person? Secondly, how can we use the resources that God has given us to face reality? The kinds I've mentioned and others that I'm going to mention how can we use the resources that God has given us to face reality? Now, what is reality? I'm sure you, you think oh, reality, we all know what reality is. Reality is defined in the dictionary as, a, as, as what is real. What underlies appearances, the way that things are, that's reality. Reality is truth. Whether it is acceptable truth or unacceptable truth, reality is truth. Whether it is ugly truth or pleasant truth, Hebrews 2 verse 3 speaks to us and says, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? How shall we escape? Salvation, I think, is God's way of making us real people. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Salvation is God's way of making us real people. Now, what is a real person? A real person is somebody who faces up to every issue that life presents and resists the temptation to escape. If you are a real person, you face every issue that life presents and you resist the temptation to run away. I want to talk about that. How real are we? Are we, are we real realists or are we retreaters? Do we face reality or do we escape? Do we run away from it? Escapism is a, is a word that has come into the psychology books these days. It is, a, it is defined as the unhealthy desire to escape from the realities of life by concentrating on other issues. If you are a person who escape, you don't face reality, it means you are escaping from reality. It is an unhealthy desire to escape from the realities of life by concentrating on other interests. 
Now, I want to mention a few characteristics. You and I live in a real world, isn't it? We live in a real world with real people and real issues. And you and I are Christians tonight. And I just want to mention some of the characteristics of the present realities that you and I face. Sin is a reality. Death is a reality. Marriage failures. Unsafe neighborhoods. Disobedient children. Overdrawn bank accounts. Difficult neighbors. The present politics, the present political climate in South Africa is a reality. Load shedding, the state of our municipalities, all of these issues are issues that you and I face on a daily basis that have become our modern day reality. We speak, when we speak about our realities, we speak about those harsh, sometimes harsh and threatening issues that happen to us all at some point in our lives from time to time. We have these threatening issues, these issues that threaten our lives as human beings. Now there are two ways that one can respond to these realities. Two ways. You either face them or you escape. You face your realities or you escape from your realities. If you are facing, if you stand up to your reality, you are a realist, they say. If you run away from your reality, you are a retreatist, you are retreating from reality. Now, I'm on, I want to touch on some of, the, some of the issues that we use as escape routes to run away from our realities. When we, are un, when we feel uncomfortable to face our realities, we escape in one of many different ways. We do not want to face these realities. We want to run away from them. We're looking for avenues to escape from these realities. And some of these are wrong attitudes. We suddenly become very negative towards life, or we adopt negative or critical um, attitudes. We start criticizing people. We get negative about life, negative about issues around us. Or sometimes we detach, we withdraw, we run away. We don't want to face these things that are around us. And for us Christians, you're probably not going to like this one. But for some of us, we attend church and we devote ourselves wholeheartedly to religious practices. And sometimes we need to question, are these all maybe some ways of us escaping our realities? Sensuous pleasures. I know of people who spend hours watching series on their phones and their laptops and their whatever they watch it on. Sensuous, those issues that please the senses. Spend time with uh, uh, trivial matters, things that, that we indulge in that, that please our senses. We sometimes run away from our realities by being in denial. We, we deny that we are experiencing these things. We also get very um, guilty of ad adopting superior attitudes. Now all of, all of a sudden we think we are better and holier and, and, and mightier than other people. We adopt these su superior attitudes. We become excessively busy. We have all sorts of activities running around us. And another way of, of escaping our reality is to indulge in self-pity. What are the things that we are feeling so sorry for ourselves about? And now, I want to say to us as Christian people, 
How can we use the resources which God has given us to face our realities? As Christians, we need to rise up to this occasion that we are being provided these days to say how do we embark on our, our leadership role as having become people who follow God and say how are we going to now tap into these resources that God has given us to face our present day realities. We can throw ourselves onto God these days and, and his resources and allow those to work within us to become the kind of people that God has originally designed us to be. You know, this is the day that we as Christians should be rising up to the present realities that are around us. What are we doing? How are we collecting ourselves together to face up to these present realities? How are we tapping into the resources that God has given us? How are we going to throw ourselves into these resources that God has given us? I'm excited because as a body, we've already done so many things. We are equipping ourselves on a Wednesday night. We're coming together on a Monday night to tap into these resources, our intercessory prayer, our uh, uh, um, messages of support, our, uh, on a Sunday, we polishing arrows in the body in order to get us ready to throw ourselves onto these different resources that we have in Christ Jesus, in order for us to not do what others do, to run away from our present realities, but to face them and to, to equip one another or to encourage one another or to challenge one another to rise up in the face of all these difficulties that I've mentioned. I'm going to say again the, uh, the characteristics of our present realities. I don't know about you, but these are the kind of things that I see around me on a daily basis. I see sin, children, young people, adults, indulging themselves in all sorts of things that are contrary to what is expected of us as human beings to love our lives. Death, like I mentioned in my opening, you know, two young lives, not even 40, not even 35, I think, these young guys are, lost their lives through death. Marriage failures, we see this all around us. Unsafe neighborhoods. The other day I went just, just le uh, um, after school, I stopped at one of the spaza shops there in Victoria Park. And I walked in, and I think the mistake I made, I walked in there with my wallet in my hand. And um, as I approached now, uh, um, in fact, when I was done with my little shopping there, I walked out, and there were two guys standing, broad daylight, half past two, after school. I stood there, and immediately when I turned around and faced them, I felt so unsafe. I knew I was in for something. Um, I had two, two things that I th was thinking about immediately. I thought about running back into the shop. Now these, these shops up there, they don't have shop space, you know. It's just a, the counter and a passage. So I thought to myself, okay, I have this plastic with my goods in my hands. I can hit with it. But there are two of them. They're definitely going to overpower. But this is half past two in the afternoon that I have to negotiate how am I going to run away from a potential robbery. I mean, we grew up, robberies happened at night somewhere in a dark alley, not in front of a spasa in broad daylight. Unsafe neighborhoods, disobedient children, overdrawn bank accounts. I don't know, I see this a lot these days that people are struggling financially. This is the present realities that, are, that we are faced with. Difficult neighbors. And then I, I don't even want to talk about, or must I talk about the present politics in South Africa? How, how sad a day it has become for us. 
where we all watch and we see leaders within the leading party organization criticizing one another as to how they're leading the country. On national television, these are the kind of realities that we are faced with. Load shedding. On Radio 2000 yesterday morning, they were interviewing little children, asking them, who is the president? What does the president do? And I laughed at some of the comments. The, the mothers, the, the parents had to get voice notes from their children just quickly before school. So the, these little chaps, the comments they made was, the state president, what he does, he's the guy that sits in his house and switches off our electricity. <laughs> the other one said, oh, he's the gentleman that stands on TV and reads our stories. I suspect that that's when he does the State of the Nation address. He reads our stories. Now he's the gentleman, the other one said, that eats our parents' money. <laughs> yeah. You know, these are the realities. These were little people. They asked, I think, up to 10 years. Those were the guys that responded to this question. What does the state president do? They knew who he was. They could say his name. And these were the things that they associated with him. The state of our municipalities. We know that things are just not what it's supposed to be. Now, how are you and I going to use the resources that God has given us to face these kind of present realities? What is our response as Christian people, as adult people, as responsible citizens? What is our response going to be like? Are we going to be realist and stand up to this reality? Or are we going to become retreaters and withdraw or become negative or criticize or become detached? Uh -uh, it's not my problem. Let them face their own problems. Or are we in denial? Are we saying, no, 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 it's not that bad, you know? It's not really happening. Are we going to continue to... Duma and worship in the church and do our thing and come and do our thing and not respond to the present realities. There's nothing wrong, please don't get me wrong. I love church, you know, I love worshiping, I love all of this, but are we indulging in all these things? We need to, we need to do a reality check tonight and see why are we doing, what is our, our, response how is our stance towards these kind of realities how can we use the resources that god has given us to face reality to look reality square in the eye and say this is our reality and throw there for ourselves into the resources that god has given us to make us the kind of people that God has originally designed us to be. God had a plan for our lives. We heard that on Sunday. God created us for a purpose. You know, if I want to know what this is, if I didn't know what it was, and I wanted to really find out what it was, the best person to ask would have been the manufacturer, isn't it? What is this? How do I use it? What is it used for? And, and this is how, one of the ways that you and I should be responding to our present reality and say, God, you designed me to be here for the time such as this. What is, in fact, I think I'm running ahead of myself. What is your expectation of me as a response to the present realities that we face. Life can be extremely hard, isn't it? But a clear perspective of who God is will get us better equipped to face up to all the unpleasant reality 
and to deal with it. We need a clearer perspective of who God is so that we can stand tall in our present realities. Now, I am a teacher by profession and on a daily basis, I look into the eyes of youth, children, young people. And one of the saddest things about this generation is that they brag about realism. They brag, oh, we are real. This is for real. This is life. But you know what? I think that this generation has actually invented many, many different ways of escaping reality. Don't you agree with me? I'm saying that this generation of young people think, they brag about them being real people. We are for real, dude. But I think they have invented so, so many ways of escaping reality. I know in my neighborhood, for example, I, and I'm sure in many others, I've heard in many others, you can think of a thousand and one ways in which this generation is running away from reality. How do we face reality? Now, having said all of these things, having said that these are our current realities, this is what reality looks like for us. This is what's happening out there in society. Our realities may be different as Christian people. Our realities may be different as people who have received so much of the word of God. But how do we teach others? And how do we teach ourselves? How do we encourage one another to face the realities that we are faced with? I want to say to you, be at home in reality. Christ is reality. I almost wanted to phrase this speech and say to it, reality, who is Christ? Then I thought, no, let me not do that. But what is our reality is Christ, is in Christ. He is our reality. So if you are a Christian and you've been saved, I want to admonish you tonight. Be at home in this reality. Find yourself one more time in this reality. Settle yourself in the reality who is Christ. And ask God, secondly, ask God to help you search and see if there are any dishonest techniques that you are subconsciously harboring or using. Are there any tactics, smart ways that you are using as a Christian, as a God-fearing individual, as an adult, as a responsible citizen, are you harboring any subconscious techniques that make you run away from the realities that we are faced with? People are living in a real world with real issues. Are we running away? Are we hiding our faces from the realities that so many people are faced with? And then, as Christian people, we know how to do this, and I think we need to even hone the skill even more. Cooperate with the Holy Spirit by being determined to, op to be open and honest. As open and as honest as you can be about where you find yourself. I started off by saying two things, and this is the place where I want to remind us. How closely do you resemble 
the definition of a real person. Are you real? What is a real person? A real person is a person who faces up to every issue that life presents and resists every temptation to escape. Our emotional maturity is measured against this issue. How strong are we in facing reality? We have to do this reality check tonight and ask ourselves, how honest am I? How real am I with myself, with God, with my fellow human beings, and especially in the church, with those that I am accountable to? How honest and how open and how real am I in the midst of reality that is happening all around us? A neurotic is defined as somebody who has this critical fear of reality. A neurotic, you know, person who is mentally ill. No, a neurotic person. So these people have all sorts of fears about, about life and about circumstances and things that are happening around them. We need to, another strategy that we need to use in order to be able to face our realities to say, let us surrender our fears to God about the real issues that are happening around us. Let's surrender our fears to God. And go out there and face the situations that are threatening us. And fix our eyes on Philippians 4, verse 13, that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want to ask us tonight again, how real are we? How real are we in facing the realities around us? Now, I am not going to be long tonight. But I just want us once again to just take a moment and think about and examine ourselves and say, how do we respond to the present realities that we see around us? Let's close our eyes and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for helping us once again to face our realities to be reminded of the realities that we are faced with as human beings today. Lord God Almighty, tonight we throw ourselves into your resources. We throw unto ourselves unto you. And we say, Father, help us to walk this day as real people. Help us not to retreat and run away from the issues that we are faced with but to stand tall in this world where we are faced with so many different issues. Help us, Lord God Almighty, stir us up once again to be people who will run after you and seek your face, to be, to be people who will acknowledge you in all our ways, to be people who will seek you, Father. I'm reminded tonight, O oh Lord, of Isaiah 22, verse 25, that says, you say in that day, the peck driven into the firm place will give way. Father, if you go, if you go, then everything goes. Everything that, no, nothing will be able to stand. And Father, we have, our societies have hung their lives and everything onto the wrong peg. And we pray, Father, that tonight you will be our peg that will be driven in so steadfastly. Lord, that there will be a firm place for us to hang on to. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen.